All right, everyone, welcome to the Thought Leadership Essentials, Three Keys to Succeed as an Author, Coach, and Speaker. My name is Dom Narciso Kim, and it is an honor to be in all of your presence. This uh, career as a thought leader has been incredibly, incredibly rewarding and fulfilling. And I can't even, uh, it's like, I, I, I still feel like I've only hit the, the tip of the iceberg in terms of the potential that I have in my career doing this work. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to first start off with my story so you understand how I even got into thought leadership. And then I'm going to talk about the three keys, what it really takes to succeed in this career. So first and foremost, I am from Los Angeles, California. Uh, my parents are from the Philippines. I'm first generation um, educated in the U.S. I went to UCLA for my undergrad in women's studies and communications. And I also went to Georgetown University for a degree in, um, in foreign service, in international affairs. I started out my whole career as a Peace Corps volunteer. So I served in Costa Rica for two years, teaching English, supporting youth, uh, doing community programs and learning Spanish. So I'm fluent in Spanish a little bit now. I haven't, I haven't been in practice, but I learned Spanish in Costa Rica and it really got me on this trajectory of servant leadership. I have always been a proponent of how can I pay forward all of the blessings I've had in my life? Because I've had great parents, I've had great experiences, and I want to continue supporting and building and growing others because that to me, that is so fulfilling. It is, it's just, I just love doing it. I've, I've always done it. And I was trying to figure out like, how do I continue helping and supporting others reach their potential? And so after the Peace Corps, I, uh, my wife and I, we got together and I moved to Venezuela out of all places and I couldn't work. I couldn't work because I wasn't recognized by the Venezuelan government, nor was I recognized by the U.S. government because of our relationship at the time. Uh, Same-sex marriage hadn't become a thing in, in the United States yet. And so I was stuck. I couldn't do, I literally could not do anything. And so I started reading. I started figuring out like, what am I going to do? And eventually I got to the idea like, you know what, I'm going to go to grad school. Maybe I'll become a di diplomat and then we can make this lifestyle work for us. However, through that whole process, um, I eventually went to, went to grad school, eventually became a diplomat in the process. We had our kids, life got busy. We've lived in a lot of different countries. And at a certain point when we were in Peru, so this was like five countries in, we had our third daughter and my spouse was like, Dom, if money wasn't an issue, what would you do? I was like, huh, that's a good question. I'm like, I would, I don't, I'm like, I would be a philanthropist in education. Like I would be educating. That's what I love to do. And so we started to think differently about our lives. It's like, well, you know, we have our careers. We can both be diplomats our, all our lives, but what would you really, really, really want to do? And it took me a while to think because all I could think about is the security of being in the foreign service. It's like, it's secure. I have health benefits. There's a structure. I know what I need to do to get promoted. You know, there's there's prestige. My parents were like, Dom, you're like a diplomat. Like my whole community is like, you're a diplomat. Like, that's amazing. But something deep inside of me was still saying, there's something else for you. And it kept nagging at me for years. It's like, Dom, there's something else for you. I'm like, uh, I'm not going to listen to it. Until one day I was at my job in Peru. And I was hosting uh, Consular Leadership Day, and I was doing a workshop. I was doing something like this, very similar, but in person, right? With the whole entire consular unit, is over 100 people. And I was on fire. Like, there was something in me that was like, I love talking to people in a space like this and getting them to work together, getting them to dream bigger, getting them to look beyond what they see in front of them. And at that time, I was like, oh, I need to be doing more of this work, but how do I do more of that? And I did it like, and that was the only question I had, but then I started to investigate and I realized like, oh, this is like what coaches do, I think, and life coaches. Like, I didn't know what that was at the time. And so I started asking around the embassy if anyone knew of any coaches, like, do you know any coaches around? Like what, like, what kind of coach? I'm like a basketball coach. I'm like, no, 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 like a coach. I don't know, that helps with something like other than sports. And a friend of mine was a health coach. I'm like, oh, what do you, what, what does a health coach do? 
It's like, oh, well, I talk about your nutrition, your goals, et cetera, et cetera. I'm like, and so I got coached by her. I was, I was trying to get some baby weight off after the pregnancy and I wanted to see what she does. And so I got coached by her. She's the first person I hired. Fast forward into the future. I was starting to looking at, um, I was looking at a lot of online, you know, online courses. And I was like listening to just a bunch of stuff, like a lot of different things from podcasting to YouTube. And I was like, how are these people making money? I'm like, I don't get it. And I kept listening for like two years. And I'm like, I just don't understand. It wasn't until I heard a talk by my mentor, Brendan Burchard, who I learned all my stuff from. And he was talking about the thought leadership economy. And I was like, oh, he's like, if you have a certain level of expertise in something, if you have life experience, you can make a living out of that. And I'm like, what? How is that possible? But then my curiosity led me to keep asking questions, keep asking myself, if I could do work that I love doing, what would it be? And it would be, it would be this, it would be workshopping it out with people, helping them achieve their goals. Very simple, very simple. Same thing I was doing as a Peace Corps volunteer in Costa Rica, same thing, except different context, right? And so I went down this rabbit hole of learning and learning and learning more and more about myself, learning more about my values, learning more about who I was and who I wanted to be in the world. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Linda. <laughs> She's like, yes, love your energy, Dom. <laughs> um, and the more and more I learned, the more and more I got connected to myself. And so the first key that I want to emphasize to all of you is that a thought leadership career, it's not like, I mean, a lot of people think it's like, it's all this external stuff. The first key to succeeding is knowing yourself so well, is doing the work on yourself, is understanding what you value, why you value it, understanding your definition of success, understanding what lights you up and what you know doesn't light you up, understanding the kinds of people that you are inspired by and the kinds of people that throw you off. It is deep, 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 incredibly deep self-awareness. If I were to look at this career, it's like a career of awakening to something else, something deeper within you and using the platform of your voice to impact others. And that's what's so powerful about it is that it's not that hard. It's very simple. I could get on, I could get on Facebook right now and just start talking and telling people to, to believe in themselves. And someone's going to hear that message at the right time, at the right place, and it's going to impact one person. That's all it takes. It just takes one person. If you do this career, even if it's a side hustle, even if it's a hobby, even if it's one hour a week, you can make an incredible impact because we live in a time and place in human history where we have access to the world. I was just looking at some statistics on like how many people are on, are on the internet, et cetera. So like there's over 7 billion people in the world 5.19 billion people are on the internet. That's 65% of the population. On YouTube alone, there's 2.7 billion users. In terms of podcasts, there's 437 million podcast listeners. The world is literally at your fingertips. But one thing that I've learned in my thought leadership career is that you don't have to think about serving the whole world. All you have to think about is serving one person, and that makes it very, very approachable. You'll hear a lot of you know, folks like, oh, scale big, do this, uh, get a million followers. There's that aspect where a lot of, you know, a lot of people get attracted to that. You know, especially if you grow up in the States, it's like big is better, bigger, 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 better, consume more, do more, all of it is bigger. But what I've learned in this space especially is that if you get so hyper-focused on who you want to serve and why you want to serve them, my philosophy now is small is beautiful. Like the people that came to this particular session, there's five of you. I had 30 people sign up and there's five of you here. You're the people I'm serving. And if I could just get one of you to take one action, I've served my purpose. That's success to me. 
that's success to me. So um, I'm curious, uh, can unmute your mics. I'm curious to hear what kind of, uh, not what kind of thought leadership, why you came to this specific event today. Why are you taking time out of your day? What are you hoping to learn or what are you, what are you working on just so I get a better understanding of where you're at and, um, and yeah, and, and then I'll focus the rest of this conversation around this specific group. So, uh, Christina, you're here, Christina, go for it. Um, well, I'm so, I'm sorry. I was typing when you said that, but, I, um, the reason why I'm here is because, um, so I, 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 I know I have so much to offer people like, and I've wanted to, um, speak and, um, be out there to help people like just manifest their lives, like really consciously create what they want. Right. And, um, and, and I know I, I, I have that ability, but it's almost like, it's almost like walking out on planks. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, you know, it's like, I can do these things, but I'm walking out on planks so I can feel underneath that I might just fall through. And so that, that feeling keeps me from going anywhere or doing anything. And, um, and I'm not really sure how to deal with this mm -hmm. um, feeling. And I don't, you know, obviously, you know, I've thought about it and, um, you know, how it, as a child, you know, I didn't have like support from my parents or whatever, but like I'm 54. I don't need to like, I don't need mommy and daddy. You know what I mean? Like, like there comes a point when you can like depend on yourself and make your own life and that's what i'd like to do so it's i've been a little frustrated okay 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 no this is this is good this is good this is why we're here to talk about these things because going out into the world and doing something that the people around you don't understand that's brave like my parents were like what are you doing and i'm like i'm doing this when i when i came to la a few weeks ago they thought i was just going to a conference I'm like, no, I'm speaking at the conference, mom. She's like, oh, you're speaking at it. I'm like, oh my gosh. I've been telling you for the past couple of months, like I'm going to LA to say hello, but then also to speak at a conference. But it just totally like went over their heads. I'm like, all right. Anyways, so Christina, you're not alone in terms of your emotions because anytime you're doing anything that is outside of your family or your community's comfort zone, it's gonna be scary because you might be the first to do it. And no one's going to understand it. That's why it's important. And for all of you ladies as well is to find communities of support because doing the work alone, which I've done, it's not great. I wish I, I wish I had a group before. I just didn't know to look for one. I just didn't know. And you don't know what you don't know. Um, but Christina, thank you so much for being here and for sharing that. We're going to get into those emotions and feelings that we feel when we're about to do something or, or we want to do something that we haven't done before. But thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Um, awesome. Uh, Lorraine, let's go to you. Oh, hello. Um, the reason that I'm here today is because this has been a goal of mine for a really long time. Like, I was a caseworker before. I was a patient care advisor. Like, I've always worked with people of different ranges. And right now, I'm at a point in my life where... I am experiencing a lot of difficulties and I need, I need to, what's keeping me afloat is this. Mm -hmm. What's keeping me afloat is making sure that I am going, I am studying to be a part of this leadership group, you know, community. I am is to a point where I generated a lesson plan. Like I'm manifesting this for my life because I know that my story and what I have to say is, is going to impact a group of people that I want to work with. Right now, my goal is to work with the mental health community, the mentally ill. And, um, oh, I'm nervous just talking about it. <laughs> um, it's something that I really feel deeply about. And I'm here today just to put the the physical step 
outside of myself to <laughs> to to be open more open like I've been trying to do a podcast it hasn't been successful I've been um trying because I'm also a poet so I've been trying to do open mics and stuff just to put myself out there haven't been successful but I'm not giving up because I know this is something that it is my calling and I'm just so glad to see someone like you and where you came from and and coming from so many different places and having the opportunity, you know, that must have been your lowest point. Mm -hmm. And you found a light within that darkness. And, you know, for me, this is my light as well. And if I'm able to reach at least one, like you said, one person or, or generate a workshop where five people is there, that's my goal as well. And I just thank you because you make it more real for me. Oh, I mean, it's, it's, when you're, when one thing that I've learned as a speaker, as a coach, as an author, I mean, just as a human being doing this work is that at a certain point, you're going to be so in tune and so connected with this higher purpose. You can call it universe. You can call it God. You can call it source, whatever it is that you believe in or don't believe in. Right. But there is something out there yeah. that is connecting all of us. And Lorraine, as you're speaking, what the crazy thing is, and here's a synchronicity, let's throw some of that in here. What you said about taking what's inside and making it physical. I literally said the same words in a conversation two hours ago to a young group wow. of women, you know, fresh out of college in their first jobs. And I'm telling them, sharing with them, you know, the Stephen Covey quote, you know, two things, everything is created twice, once in the mind and once in the physical world. So you must first create it within and then take the action to create it outside of you. And that is the beauty of being human is that we are ultimately, we're all creators. And if we do not create what is within us, we are leaving a lot of our potential like to waste. And so if there's anything I can do for all of you is to help you take those steps to actualize, actualize the dream, actualize you know, the thing within you that you're called to do. And Lorraine, thank you for being here. Cause when I hear your voice and I see you and the way that you express yourself, you're, I mean, it, it is your calling. It's, it's, it's deep. It's, it is deeply meaningful to you. So, you know, keep doing what you're doing. I'm here to support you. I'm all the way in Australia, but you know what? Here we are connected. Thank goodness for the internet. Um. All right, let's go over to Miss Peggy. Hey, everybody. <clears throat> Let me just say that, Dom, your uh, enthusiasm is infectious. So thanks. Thanks for a good, good morning. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. I think what you've said has really resonated with me. Um, every time I move, I feel like I'm doing a little bit more soul searching, right? I'm in a new environment, thinking, and the piece about helping people. Uh, that really resonates, right? If you can just really help at least one person in, I don't know, any given time, there's something deeply satisfying about that. Mm -hmm. So I just went through, uh, this past summer, I helped a good friend I haven't been in touch with sort through some family issues that was weighing on her mind. And just, just the way we discussed it and listening and just, I don't know, providing a different perspective helped her reframe what the issues were. And she's the one who said, Peggy, you should think about being a coach. <clears throat> just because, and then I hadn't thought about it before, but just all the things that you said, uh, it's making me doing a little bit more of a deeper dive into this possible career path for me. Ooh, so good. You know, if you ever hear anyone, thank you, Peggy. If you ever hear anyone telling you and suggesting to you something and it resonates, it feels true to you. You feel the energy behind it. Don't take that lightly. That's like the universe dropping hints at you. Like, Hey, you should be doing this more. Mm. Like, like really, like these are the hints and the clues of, you know, the physical world pushing you or nudging you towards something that, you know, it's, it's, it's new. Maybe you don't know anyone that does this kind of work, but if it rings true for you, follow it. I love this, this, I, I heard this from someone else, like always follow your curiosity. I've always done that. Like since I was a kid, I'm always curious about so many things. 
But the more you follow that curiosity and it feels right and good to you, even if it might be a little scary and unknown, it's okay. Like that's why we're here. We're here to experiment with all the beauties of the world. Like we're not here to just accept what something someone gives us. We're here to actually create what we want for ourselves. So good, Peggy. Thank you, thank you. All right, Tanisha, you're up. Oh no, your your button not working. <laughs> oh, there you go. Okay, there we go. Um, okay, well, I'm here tonight because I want to become. I'm going to become a public speaker. Um, I'm kind of nobody. Um, I'm kind of in the. I'm kind of in the process of being all over the place. Um, my thing is public speaking on grief. Mm -hmm. um, life while grieving is what I'm shooting for. Um, my experience was losing my brother at the age of 18. And um, throughout the 20 years, like no one really touched on grief and grieving. And now that I kind of got to a place where I healed, um, you know, with my relationship with God, I went through my healing journey. And I've been, like you said earlier, I've been learning a lot about myself. So it's kind of like I want to get out there in the world, but I also want to make sure that I'm healed before I start working in this department. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's kind of where I'm at with my public speaking and kind of putting myself out there in the world. I kind of get lost as to where to, where to start and all those kind of things. Yeah. And I just finished... Um, a course with David Kessler um, to be a grief educator, but I feel like I need to be more than that. So I'm shooting to be a, a grief coach. Okay, great. So. great, awesome. I mean, you know, it's like, it's it's our, our struggles that we've struggled with. That is what mm -hmm. we're asking. You know, um, just, to give you, just to give you some, some background and, and thank you, Tanisha, like, for you going through your healing journey, and this is for everybody, whatever you have healed through, whatever you have overcome, this is part of your thought leadership career. That is why people will go to you because you have lived experience. You know what it's like to be at the very bottom. You know what yes. it's like to be scared. You know what it's like to overcome. You know what it's like to get back at the bottom, right? It's not like a straight keep going up. It is literally, it is a roller coaster of emotions because this is life teaching us what we need to learn and grow through. Every next level, there is another obstacle to face, another dragon to slay. But we're capable right. of doing it. We're capable of doing it. So good, Tanisha. Thank you. And just to 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 add to your thought about you 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 saying you want to go through your healing journey before you start. Part of the thought leadership career is that you don't have to be a hundred percent healed. You can start helping today because you've gone through a lot, all of us have, in all the different ways that we have. And you know just enough to help another person. So that is how, I'm gonna put that there. Y'all can like put that there and be like, oh, Dom says I can start today. It's because you can. It's okay. Yes. Um, all right. Let me go to uh, Miss Linda over here, who is just an awesome, awesome person, Linda. Hi, hey everybody. Thank you so much, Dom, for creating this beautiful group here that we can all get together. Wow. Um, you, you women are so amazing and so inspiring. And I love this energy. It's great. So I am coming into this group uh, very much for the same reasons you all are. I've been through some stuff. I've had some experiences and I've been working on myself and I've acquired all this knowledge and all this wisdom. I'm like, hey, I can't hold all this for myself. This information needs to get out there. It needs to be shared. And so I want to talk to people about healing from PTSD. And specifically, I want to talk to people about how the pandemic was stressful and traumatic for a whole bunch of us. And that stress and trauma just settles in and, and can create inflammation in the body and, and create havoc and long term side effects that are really harmful in the long run. And, you know, I went 20 years without knowing uh, I had PTSD because of traumatic experience I had when I was really young. And so that trauma-based uh, way of living was just my normal 
So I didn't have any other frame of reference to understand uh, what what normal people <laughs> live like. And so I thought, if it can happen to me, if I can have PTSD for that long and not know I had it, it can happen to anybody. And so I really want to get the message out there and talk to people and say, hey, these are the symptoms. This is what you need to look for. But you know what? It's not the end of the world. We can still heal from this. The pandemic was rough on a lot of us for a lot of different reasons, but we can bounce back and we can rebuild and we can do it better. So good. <laughs> this is like just like a, a combined masterclass for everybody because y'all are dropping so much, so much wisdom. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Linda, um, for sharing. So as as you see, um, you know, we're all we're all so unique, right? Our backgrounds are so unique. But the thing that bonds us together is that we want to serve. And so I want you to think about thought leadership is servant leadership. That's how I viewed it. I just never ex I never articulated it that way. Because like all this time, like since growing up, I'm like, I just want to serve and volunteer and all this stuff. I'm like, but how do you how do you make, you know, how do you actually make it work for you and and monetize it, right? Like let's add the money aspect to it. And so I hear I hear everything that you're saying. And because you all are in that energy of service, you're in the right place. You're in the right place. And to continue building and growing your skills and to continue using your voice for good, for impact. That is like, if there's anything we can all leave on this earth, it's like someone remembers you and they're like, oh yeah, that person impacted me. That's, be that's a beautiful life. That's something to aspire to. Um, all right, so I shared the first key with you all really getting to know yourself, doing the work on yourself. And I think all of you have like done a lot of that, which is amazing because that's the hardest part is actually doing all that work. It's like, oh my gosh, it's so, it's so hard answering all these questions about myself. The second key is being relatable. Can people relate to you? Are you approachable? Do you create, do you not create? Here's another word. And this is like, this is mass like communications and, social skill mastery 101. Do you consciously and intentionally create the space in which you're about to inhabit? Do you consciously and do you consciously and intentionally create the space you're about to inhabit? So as you're going into a social interaction, as you approach someone, as you go to a meeting, as you go to a class, as you what is your intention? What energy are you going to bring to that? How are you gonna make the other people feel in that room? How are you gonna make the person sitting across from you feel? It's getting out of your head and getting into the intention of like, I wanna create a good space for these folks. I want them to believe that this is possible for them. I want them to know that it's all so hard to not lie to their faces and be like, yeah, you could do it tomorrow. It's a process, it's a journey. I want them to feel like it's okay to take the next step. So are you relatable? Are you able to connect with the people that you need to connect with? Are you able to connect with the people that can help you connect with the people that you want to connect with? Are you showing up authentically as yourself, you know, regardless of the environment you're in? There's this one quote I heard, I forget who said it, but the person, I'm like trying to quote you, but I forgot your name. <laughs> how you do one thing is how you do everything. How you do one thing is how you do everything. So I want all of you ladies to get hyper intentional about how you connect. How do you want people to feel when they interact with you? What do you want, what, what, what is that interaction? Like when you get to that level of intention, you are an incredible influencer, but not like the social media influencer. I'm talking about like real, real, impactful physical influence because the energy that you bring to that interaction you can transfer that energy like what i'm doing to you right now i am bringing all that i have all that i've got because i want to inspire you to do the same with others because i'm just one person right like i can only have so much influence but hey if i can impact you all and the five of you go out into the world and you go impact one person how many people did i not did I, I don't want to be like all egotistical, but as a result of this class, how many people were impacted? 10, right? 
And then you keep multiplying it out and then it just pays it forward. And that is the power of a thought leadership career is that it just starts with one person and then you can impact their whole family generation. It's crazy because you shifted their mindset about how to think about grief, how to think about mental illness, how to think about, I don't know, relationships to your parents, how to think about all these things that we struggle with as humans. There's been no other time in human history where we have access to all this knowledge, but it's not just about the access anymore, right? It's about how are you transmitting the wisdom to another person so that they can implement it into their lives. It's the transmission of wisdom, I think. Like that just, just dropped for me. I'm like, oh yeah, that's what we're doing here. So how can you connect better with the people that you are serving? So you need to have that relational social skills and to use it consistently to keep building it, to keep growing it and to keep getting around people and also people that make you uncomfortable. This is it, like this is the work. You're gonna get around people that don't believe what you're doing. How are you gonna to respond to them? You know, it's 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 hard, but it's totally doable. I'm gonna pause and, and, and before I share the, the third key, I wanna share um, the history of like when I first started and what transpired during the, the pandemic to give you an idea. So when I started my thought leadership career or journey, I got myself a coach and um, I didn't have any coaching certification, but I had done, I had read a ton of books, all the books, like all the self-help books. And I'm always writing down my goals, always reflecting, always doing these things. But one of the things that helped me get to where I am is that I'm action oriented. So when I decided to retire from my very short stint as a US diplomat, and I decided to step into this role as a, as a workshop trainer, just as a person that enjoys doing workshops, right? I'm like, I'm gonna go into South Korea and I'm gonna do a workshop in the community and I'm gonna teach them about personal growth. I'm gonna teach them about how to think about success, how to think about happiness, how to think about all these things. And when I did that first event, it gave me, I had like five people show up, right? It gave me the courage to do another event. And so instead of just doing it with the community, I asked the embassy, I'm like, is it possible for me to do a workshop here in the embassy with the embassy inside the, with the empl employees as well? And they're like, oh, like, yeah, like we can work something out. Great. So now I'm in a bigger environment teaching the same stuff, a little bit of a different audience, but teaching the same stuff. And at the end of that, workshop this my first client my first paying client he raises his hand he's like dom how do i hire you i've never met him i've never met him he's not a friend he's like how do i hire you i'm like i'll get back to you give me an email i didn't have a package and i'm not saying go into this and not know anything i'm just saying this is how it happened for me and how it transpired just to give you an idea of what i did and so i did that workshop I signed on my first client, my first coaching client. I didn't have a coaching certification, but I knew how to walk people through questions. I knew that I was a good listener. And I also knew that I was a good teacher and a good challenger. So I knew that about myself. That's why knowing yourself is so critical to this work. And so I ended up coaching him. He ended up writing three books and I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> you already, he already had it in him, but he just needed a push. And that's what I did. And that's what your role is going to be. The potential is there for every person that you're going to touch, for every person you're going to impact. It's just a matter of getting them to take that next bold action, getting this, getting them to step outside of their comfort zone. Because as humans, by the time we're 35, we are creatures of habit. We just want to be comfortable. Anything outside of that comfort zone, it requires work. Not like physical work, but like mental and emotional and spiritual work. Our brains and our grooves in our brain, they are set by 35. But by the time you're 35 and you wanna grow, you have to get yourself around these kinds of groups. You have to start putting yourself in a room where you're like, you don't know anything. You have to get uncomfortable. And that's okay because that's the process of learning. That's why we do these things. That's why we're on this planet is to continue growing, becoming, learning and evolving. So after that, first client, 
<laughs> bring on the neuroplasticity. Yes, neuroplasticity. After that first client, I got several clients after that because he started referring. He's like, oh yeah, you should work with Dom. Oh yeah, you should work with Dom. I'm like, oh my gosh, like this is great. But then the pandemic hit and all of a sudden everyone was like, you know, back in their homes. And I was like, oh man, like I can't see people. But the crazy thing is because I was posting videos on Facebook, the embassy folks saw my Facebook post or someone was seeing them. And they call me one day in the middle of the pandemic in Korea. I, re I remember I was like, I was in the middle of like doing sit-ups like in my house. Cause I'm like, I need to get some exercise. And the phone's ringing. I'm like, who's calling me right now? And like my kids are homeschool, all this craziness. I'm like, oh, I'm like, hello. And like, hi, Do is this Dominique? Dominique Kim. And I'm like, oh yes, hi, uh, may I help you? Yeah, this is uh, so-and-so from the public diplomacy office. I'm like, oh, hi, oh, hi, yes. Um, Is there anything I can help you with? They're like, yeah, we uh, we we need a speaker. And I'm like, excuse me, we need a speaker. And I'm like, oh, me, like, like me? <laughs> I was shocked, I was literally shocked. Never in my mind, never in any of my vision boards did I have become a public speaker for the US embassy. It was never a thought, it was never a thought. And they said, yeah, you know, with the pandemic happening and, you know, airlines are down, we, we need, we need a speaker and we saw your videos on, on, on Facebook. And I'm like, oh, great. Yeah. Um, uh, when, when, you know, when would you like me to come in? Do you like want me to meet, et cetera, et cetera. And I had the meeting a few days later and they paid me, you know, not a huge sum of money, but it was the first time I got paid to speak. And it gave me this incredible sense of confidence. I'm like, whoa, that just happened. And I spoke on behalf of the US government. <laughs> crazy. You know, speaking to frontline workers, like, how crazy is that? And because I did such a good job in those speaking engagements, they hired me on for another year. And I got to do more of the online speaking, I got to do hybrid events. So I was like, totally innovating. I'm like, because they've never done any online events. And I like created this whole like, this is how you do it. And this is how you get people engaged for two hours online. Um, So I had the I had the great experience of learning how to do all of that. Uh, and then also traveling around Korea to speak at these public libraries on success, on happiness, on joy, and all these great things that I love talking about to a foreign audience. Like how wild is that? And because I had that experience, I was just emboldened. I'm like, oh, I could just ask now. Who can I ask to like, who can I, where can I speak? And at the tail end of my experience in, in Korea, I was speaking at a, at a, not a conference, at a career, career panel, the Zoom talk for my kid's school. And I was the only entrepreneur on that panel. Everyone else was like the CEO or the COO of some crazy big company. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what am I doing on this panel? And the woman before me who spoke, she was the COO of McKinsey and Company in Seoul. And in Korea, talking about failure is not a thing you talk about. You never talk about failure. But this woman, she talked about failure. She talked about not passing like in high school, but still finding a way to make it to the top in college. And that, I was like, wow, she just did that. I like her. I linked and messaged her. She messages me back and we're like doing this on, on Zoom. I'm like, I love your story. Can we have a virtual coffee sometime? And she straight up, she, she heard my story. She heard me speak and she's like, Dom, why don't you come to the office? I was like, oh, okay. And this was like the biggest, tallest building in Korea. So it's like, oh my gosh. A couple of weeks later, I go to their office. I go to the big tall building. I totally feel like a fraud. And I'm like, what am I doing here? I'm like, no, wait. It's okay, like, I'm gonna own this. And I just have a chat with her. We have a chat and I said, hey, how can I help you? How can I help? Like, I love talking to, to women leaders. Like, how can I help? Like, let me let me do a, let me throw a, let me, let me do a complimentary like workshop with you all so you can see how I work. And that led to work with McKinsey. And so I share all of this with you because I literally just tried things. I experimented. I didn't have someone right beside me saying, okay, Dom, now you're going to go do this. Now you're going to go do this. Now you're going to do go do this. I just did what I felt was right. I showed up, I served, 
And then I got an outcome. But every time I got a new outcome, I learned something new about myself. I'm like, oh, wow, I didn't know you could do that. And so I share that with all of you because it is just an experiment in the beginning. If you've been thinking about like how you want to do this or you're like stuck in your head or like, oh. The third key, here's the third key. You have to be entrepreneurial. You have to learn quickly and take action quickly. Small experiments. So like when I think about you, Tanisha, you want to be a public speaker. What is a small action you can take to start speaking? I'm just going to put you on the spot right now because this is a this is a good exercise of entre of being entrepreneurial. So Tanisha, what is one idea or one action you can take to start speaking about the topic that you want to talk uh, talk about? Oh, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Okay, I'm going to pick on someone else. Um, Peggy, what is one action you can take to start exploring this whole coaching thing that you're thinking about? Um, <clears throat> I could, um, I don't know, advertise my services through word of mouth. Um, specifically, I've been thinking about transitional transitions and how we all go through transitions through life, whether it's it's a physical move or like a mental change. Somebody I know just got married and then moved to another country. Like those are huge milestones. Yeah. So it's helping people navigate that change and to have a different perspective. So you talk about mindset, go, you know, reframing things. So that would be how I could start. Good. Great. Love it. See, it's like, it's just the, it's just that simple act of doing something. Tanisha, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, I'm back. I just got this phone, so I'm working okay, with it okay. while I work okay. with the men. <laughs> okay, so um, I've already done two um, two women conference um, on grief, and I've also started doing blogging. Okay, okay. So, and while I do my blogging and doing different content, it's allowing me to get comfortable. Like right now, whenever I speak, like I'm not all the way there, you know, so whenever I do my online stuff, it kind of, you know, it kind of helps. Mm -hmm. So I'm growing to get there. It's not like I'm just, you know, I want to be a public speaker and I'm not speaking. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's kind of what I'm doing to get there. Good, 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 good. No, I love it. Like there is, I mean, and there's so many ways, right? There's so many different ways to start being a thought leader. There's like millions of ways, but ultimately the skill that you are using is your ability. To, well, there's two skills, your ability to communicate and your ability to communicate authentically because authentic communication, that's what's going to drive, that's what's going to hit people. And that's also what's going to, it's what's going to drive you. If you are teaching something that you deeply believe in, it will continually, it's like regenerative. It'll continually give you energy, give you more energy. And every time you get that feedback, from a person that says like, oh my gosh, that talk was awesome. Like, oh my gosh, I went through this and you taught me this. Every time you get those little bits of feedback or even big bits of feedback, it keeps feeding your soul. And you're like, I need to keep doing this because it's actually helping and it's actually working. So good, so good, Tanisha, thank you. So thank you. I'm, I'm gonna speak a little bit about just being an author, speaker and coach and kind of what you need to be doing or start doing more of so you build those skills out. <laughs> of being an author you want to write a book or you want to be known as a writer the skill is you got to keep writing you got to keep publishing you got to keep putting your work out there you got to get around other authors you got to get them to start talking about your work you got to get in those rooms that support authors in your genre that's the kind of type of thinking you got to do you want to be a speaker what kind of speaker do you want to be how do you want to use your voice uh, Lisa Nichols is an excellent, excellent, excellent. I mean, she's at the top of her game, uh, speaker, and she has like a lot of speaker trainings. I listen to her because I just get inspired by her. I'm like, this woman is just another level. But she was intentional about her career. When she started learning about speaking in like this whole space of like online business, she was a student. She went to, I think she like, she says like she went to the same conference like 16 times, repetition repetition, repetition until she really got it. So speaking, using your voice, 
Julie wrote this down. Use your voice as an instrument of emotion. You can learn how to use your voice to move people through an emotional state. It takes time. It takes effort. You know, you got, you have to know, you have to know your, your, your content. You have to know how to storytell. You have to know when to speed up your talking and when to slow it down, when to increase the volume or to lower the volume. <laughs> All of those things you start to learn as you speak more. And it also depends on your, on the energy of your, of your group, right? I spoke at a conference two weeks ago uh, where I met Christina and that room was huge. I've never spoken to a, a room that big. And it was after lunch. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I got the after lunch section. Like, how am I going to get them? How am I going to get them energized? And I'm like, well, let me do what I've seen other people do. Like, I'm going to go walk the room, going to ask some questions. So people are raising their hands and they're engaging, you know, and trying to test things out that I can't really do, do online. And so I felt the energy of that room. I had them. I, I felt them. And that, that to me was like, okay, like now I have that experience. And next time I do another conference, I have something to work off of. And finally, oh, and so speaking, be around other speakers, get in that space, get into that energy. So then you can ask them for feedback. Like, how did I do? How did I do? And finally, coaching. What I love about coaching is that it basically takes all of the skills that you learn as a thought leader, you know, the writing and the speaking, and then you start to bring it together and you use your listening, your level of intuition, your ability to read someone and move them along their own journey in the way that they need to be moved. I think coaching and that skill set, it is very, very, um, what's the word? It is something you develop over time, especially when you work with lots of different kinds of people. Um, and again, be around other coaches. Ask them what they do. Ask them what they've learned. Ask them what they're reading. So as you're stepping into this space as a thought leader, author, speaker, coach, or all three of them, what's, what do I want to say? It's, it's so simple, it's like kind of profound. It's like, be the thought. What is the thing that you're going to, what's the message? What is the energy? What is the, what is the thought that you want to express to people? And how do you lead that thought into other people's minds, into other people's life experiences? For me, the thought that I want people to feel and to, to in, embody in their life is that it's possible. It is possible. If I can do it, you can do it. If I got through my low times of having no career to doing work I love, you can do it too. I'm not, I was telling, who was I saying this? I was saying this to someone, like, I'm not special. And they're like, oh no, Dom, but you are special. I'm like, no, I'm like, we're all special. But I think the challenge is that we've forgotten that we have our voice and that we can use it to do really great work in the world. And it doesn't take a lot of effort in the beginning. It just takes one bold step. So I will pause there and um, gosh, uh, I'm going to open up the floor to any questions that you may have. And then I'm going to share with you uh, a little bit. How, how, how's everyone on time? Can I go five minutes over or is it, is it too much? It's good. Okay. I'll go, I go like five, five, 10 minutes over. Cause I want to, I want to engage with you all, but what is, um, tell me any insights or any questions that you may have. This is your time to ask, and then I'll share a little bit more about what I'm thinking of doing, not thinking of doing, what I'm going to launch and uh, would love for you to be a part of. All right, Lorraine, I think Lorraine's going to say something. Yeah. Um, you brought up a lot of ideas that I had in mind, but I never implemented. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I plan to start doing that I I would like to share with you to see if that's okay is um recording myself mm -hmm. yeah i think that if i record myself then I'm, i'll be able to work on the emotion like you said if it's high or low especially that i i i it's like i have i um like i said i always envision and then i try to put it out there 
So I feel like I should work on my podcast, not really to put it out there, but to just start vocalizing it somewhere. Mm -hmm. Like, and I don't, and my question would be is how, like, should I look for more workshops and and under this topic or I don't really know how to find, I know New York City is very big on like finding resources, but I don't know where to find people like us that Mm -hmm. isn't online. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that's the hard part. Yeah, yeah. It's it it where where are you located, Lorraine? Oh, you're in New York. Are you in New York? Yeah. Okay. Oh, you're in New York. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you're in New York. <laughs> that's yeah. all I'm trying to say. There are people in New York that do this work. Um, or here's another idea, right? Entrepreneurial, start the group in your community. Be the podcast person and learn together. Oh. Like it's you know, sometimes we think like, oh, we need to like wait for someone else to like get it going. In in Peggy and I's world where we literally move countries every two to three years and we have to start over. At a certain point, you're like, I'm just going to start something because no one else is doing it. So in New York City, there's like, I mean, there's so there's so much. It's like, go Google like podcasts, seminars or get, I don't know. There there has to be a ton of things happening. Um, I'm going to do more research because definitely, like, I do, I have foundations. I just need the the resources and the understanding to build them up. That's it. And, and I think that's the hard part. Part of, so here is one lesson I learned that I want to impart to all of you is there is a time to learn right? Like there's learning sprints where you have to like, I need to learn this one thing so I can actually do it. But there's also this thing that happens, especially to entrepreneurs or anyone starting anything new. You just keep learning and you don't even implement anything and don't get stuck in that. Learn and implement, learn and implement. Like after today's call, like do something, (laughs) commit to something that you're going to do to move your career forward in this space. It could be anything. It could be writing a post about this session, right? Like I, you know, I was at Dom's thing and it was awesome. And she taught me this. So I'm going to do this, whatever it is, just take an action because you are giving energy to what you want. So it's learn, learning and implementation. And that's like the entrepreneurial aspect. Being an entrepreneur is not just the learning. It's also doing the things that you haven't done before. And it's going to be uncomfortable. Um, and one more question. Yeah. What do you do in order to overcome the the bad moments like the hiccups meaning I was doing open mics and I stopped doing it because I had really a really bad one Mm. and I couldn't I can't at this moment I can't forget it Mm -hmm. and it's become a crutch for me So, so the first key that I was talking about knowing yourself personal growth mindset like that's why like the continually growing who you are internally and your belief in yourself internally, when those things happen and they do happen, you have this reservoir of internal strength that you're like, Hey, that happened. I learned something and now I'm going to do it better. And to continually practice that over and over and over again, you know, like when your parents say like, keep practicing, you're like, I suck. It's like, yeah, you're going to suck. That's normal. You know, Ali Wong, does anyone know Ali Wong? You have no must know Ali Wong. I knew Ali when she was at UCLA. She was phenomenal in the in the what is it? Um, improv. I'm like, who is this woman? Can like, I research her? Yeah, yeah. Check out Ali Wong. Like, oh, as a thought leader too. Like, look at people that you love, like entertainers. They practice their craft. It's all like, okay. it's all it's all a part of it. But, um, Ali started out, you know doing dive bars on in LA and then now she you know now she's doing like big bold things but everyone starts small and so Lorraine like what you're feeling and what you're going through it's 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 totally normal but it's this is the catch it's like don't get stuck there keep making progress and keep leveling up when you learn something it's like okay now what do I want to do next now what's something a little bit more courageous that I could do thank you so much yeah any more questions? Christina, you're thinking over there. <laughs> say, it, Christina, what are you going to say? 
<laughs> no, I, I, I'm just taking it in. Um, I, I think I, I, um, I always feel like I'm like straddling two different things because, um, I'm a writer and I need time to actually write, mm -hmm. but then I want to be doing these other things. So it's like almost self-defeating in a way because I, I like, I'm always like, wait, I should be doing this. And, and then I, I, I try to, um, engage in like the literary community and stuff and I do do a lot but then I kind of resent it <laughs> mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. then I'm like I'm spending all this time and I need to be writing mm -hmm. and and so then there then it's this constant like tug of war yeah so there's gonna be and this is where you have to get super disciplined and also like get feedback from others like what do you do how do you do it because each and every one of us we're different in the way that we work in the way that, in the rhythm in which we work. There are some folks that can go like five months without talking to a soul and like write like five books, right? And then there's some folks that need like a whole year to write. So really getting to know what your creative process is and then creating boundaries around that and not let, letting anyone's agenda, anybody's time get into that because that's your art. You need, a, you need time to create. And then you're gonna need time to communicate what you create. Because you can't just like leave it in the bubble. Like, okay, how do I go out and show people what I've done? So there's the creation time and then there's the connection time. And then sometimes it's sometimes it weaves in and out with each other. But then what's good about having goals, you know, with your writing is, well, I need to have this completed by this time. And then everything else that comes around, I'm going to say no to. And it gets hard. It gets hard. But when you get really, really hyper-focused on your mission and your vision and why you're even in this in the first place, you'll know what to say no to because it just doesn't align in that moment. Like I got to get this done. Hope that helps. All right. Peggy, Tanisha, Linda, any questions? No, you good? You good? All right. So thank you ladies for like, for just being here and, and being in this space and doing the work that you're doing. It's incredibly important. It's incredibly useful. It's incredibly like, I mean, you being successful doing this work, it just, it it literally changes the trajectory of the world because that one person or those five people that you impact, whatever change happens within them, they impact their communities. And that's what's so powerful about it and what's underestimated about it. And also to know that you don't have to go big you can go really, really small and really, really intentional, and that's enough. So I'm doing this thing, and it's called Thought Leadership Lab. I haven't done it before, but I've had people DM me and ask me, like, Dom, do you teach this? Like, how do you do it? All this stuff. And I'm like, you know, I, I could teach it, and I could help people, and like, but what would that actually look like? And so this is my thought. And you could be part of the beta group the experimental group. So the Thought Leadership Lab is just, as I say it, it's a laboratory. It's a laboratory for you to do these types of things, to put yourself out there, to do a workshop, to do a video, to write a blog, to do something that is going to add to your thought leadership career so that you can get the practice and the confidence and the feedback and the community. Feedback and community, those are the two things that I did not have in the beginning, I think I would be really, really far by now if I had that, if I even knew to look for that. And so Thought Leadership Lab, the idea is 10 weeks, two weeks on, two weeks off, two weeks on, two weeks off. So, or basically six, six, weeks, six weeks of live sessions where I'm teaching you and guiding you and coaching you, and then four weeks of implementation. And then ultimately at the end of the Thought Leadership Lab, the goal is for you to have a project. It's either you're doing a workshop or either online. I, I would say like maybe online so then we can come. <laughs> or some, some, site, some type of presentation where you're delivering your magic. Deliver the magic, right? If you want to teach on whatever you want to teach on, deliver something. And then use the group as a source of strength. You're not doing it alone. But then what's great about it is that you're gonna have 
me as a, as a mentor, as a guide, I'm going to be giving you feedback. And then you're going to have your experiences because the thing with overcoming the, um, I think Christina, you were saying like when you're stepping on planks and you're unsure, you're uncertain. Um, that's why you need the community and the feedback. Because if you think that you have to do it alone, that's, it's, it's not the right way to do it. You have to do it with people. You have to do it with others that get what you're doing. Um, so Thought Leadership Lab, I'm going to offer it as a beta, beta group for this group for 497 for 10 weeks with me. I would usually offer this probably like triple that or quadruple that. But I want you all to have a sense of confidence and, and also experience. I want you to build the experience. So if you're like, Dom, I want to try to do this. It's like, okay, let's focus on that project for the next 10 weeks. And then I'll hold you accountable. I'm like, where is it? <laughs> did you do it? What did you learn about yourself? Because it's, it's in the process, it's in the motion that you're going to get the clarity about what you want to focus on. If you are stuck in your head and you're thinking and you're thinking and you're thinking, you'll overthink and then you won't do anything because you're overwhelmed. So I want to take out all of that brilliance, all of that magic from you and then put it out into the world and then see what happens, right? Like when I got started, it literally was, I'm going to do a workshop. And then I got my first coaching client. I wasn't even planning for it. Or I, I put out a few videos on Facebook and then it happened for me, like it happened for me. I was in the right place at the right time. I'm not saying that that's going to be your exact thing, but when you put your voice out there, some someone will hear it. Someone will hear it. Whoever needs to hear it, they're going to hear it. And that's the value of this career is that it's not just a job. This is a calling and to see it as that. All right. So I, I can send more information about that, about the program. I want to start next week. Uh, as early as as next week at this this specific time frame around 12 uh 7 p.m pst um but yeah any questions about that oh for for those of you that that need to hop off you're more than welcome to hop off but if you have any questions about it let me know so it's 497 10 weeks with me i'll guide you through thought like starting the thought leadership process and you know helping you build out what you want and and to do it with, hopefully there's more than, hopefully all of you sign on, <laughs> then we all have each other. Um, but you know, hopefully we have a group going and then use this as an experiment because it is an experiment. It's not like an end all be all, you have to have it perfect. It is a work in progress. I'm still a work in progress. I'm, I'm still learning as you're learning. And I've just happened to be learning for the past five years in this space. And I've had a lot of experience doing podcasts, doing YouTube, doing retreats, doing what have you. I've tried it all. And so, you know, use me as a resource as you embark on this journey. Peggy, I feel like you have a question. <laughs> oh, you have to unmute. Actually, your I need to I need to hop off. Uh, okay. but I just want to say thank you. This was very useful. Um, and I'll have a think. Okay, great. Great, great, great. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, Excellent. bye everybody. I send, yeah, I will send more information. Okay. All right, so, um, oh. Dom. What um, I'm I'm interested, but um, I have made a promise to myself that I'm just going to work on my like finish my book because mm -hmm. I just need to see it through and mm -hmm. and finish it. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm not sure how long it, it's going to take, but I probably won't be done until the end of September. Mm -hmm. So I don't know um, if I can make it if it's we start next week because I I just in terms of time I just don't have enough of it. So I, I will challenge you with this. If you want to get your book done, use the book as your project and then use this as a source of like focus and, and support. Like that's, 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 that's one, that's one thought. That's one thought. Um, you could be like, I don't, I mean, yeah, that's, there's always going to be, here's the thing. There's always going to be excuses, which is fine. You know, if you're not ready to, to, to hop on or whatnot, but there's also like time is of the essence. And if there is anything that you want to get going, especially at this time of the year, September, we all know once October hits, it's like, then it's the holidays, right? And everyone gets into holiday mode. So my goal for this is to get you, to push you through that, to push you in the beginning, like September, October. So by the time the holiday mode hits, you already have a lot of wins. 
because you your your brain and your body all of it you need wins to give you more momentum for the future because we can easily go into next year and you're in the same place as you were today or before this call at least <laughs> so so if i let's say um use the time to uh obviously finish the book but um to work on like how to publicize the book and how to get out there. Yeah. Um, how to talk that... about the book. Yeah. Yeah. And have a plan. Okay. For that. And then even like when you finish, even before you finish the book, start talking about the book on your socials or to your community. So they're ready. They're prime. They're like, Oh, Christina has been talking to, to us about this for a while now. So they're not like, Oh, you know, five, five months from now, you're like, I wrote a book. You're like, Oh, and then people still have to like get used to that, you know? So you can start seeding the idea that you wrote a book or you're writing a book and you're in the process of finishing it and to take your readers and your audience and your client and your potential, you know, audience through your journey of finishing that book. And they get to be a part of that with you. Like there's always a, there's always a story. There's always a story to be told. And um, there's lots of ways to, uh, to start publicizing before it's out. And actually it's smart to do to before you even finish it. Okay. Yeah. So, so for me, you've you've been amazing. Like the way that you're making me feel right now is like I'm ready. But um, at the moment, I am experiencing homelessness. Mm. Um, and I don't have the funds to take your course. But um, I would like if you send information, I would one day definitely. But I'm sorry that um I can't right now okay it's all right I'm still here Lorraine like whatever you're doing continue to to continue to stay engaged and 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 I'm here I'm here I'm here to stay I'm gonna keep doing this career until like I can't do it anymore so I'll be I'll be around yeah, I will find you I will find you and you will see me again awesome awesome so <laughs> good 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 Tanisha any last thoughts or questions Um, I'm going a, I'm to a think about taking the course. I've signed up to become a life coach. I don't want to put too much on me yeah. at one time. Of course. Which I already have. <laughs> <laughs> and it happens. Remember, I told you, remember this. You can be in learning mode, which is great. But you have to implement as you're learning. Because if you're not implementing as you're learning, you're not making full progress as fast as you can. You need to have the wins, like your brain needs the wins to actually believe that it's possible. And that's what this program would do is to actually give you the, the physical wins. So then it's not just a thing that you learn, it's a thing that you're doing. So just keep that, keep that in mind. When you're learning your life coaching, coach other people. Okay, don't just learn it, start coaching folks, the things that you're learning, because that's what's going to speed up the process of you getting into this career. Things I wish I had known early on. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much this has been very helpful though. awesome awesome thank you so much for Thanks, being Tom. all right <laughs> talk to you soon i'll be in touch bye bye oh, how do i see